For the second time this week, solar flares are expected to cause major disruptions to radio and GPS signals all around the world. The flares, which are large explosions caused by tangling, crossing, or reorganizing magnetic field lines, happened over the weekend but are just now making their way to Earth. On Monday, the flares caused a radio blackout over both poles that lasted for hours, with some disruptions felt near the Pacific coasts. Scientists, scientists are warning that another is expected today and that they could even impact the power grid. So let's figure out why. Joining me now is Laura Seward Forsick, a space professional, consultant, and author. Laura, thank you so much for giving us some of your time. First of all, what exactly does a moderate solar storm really even mean? Well, the reason you haven't heard much about this is because we've gone from a period of solar minimum and now we're increasing it to a go to a solar maximum. It's a cycle that happens every 11 years. And so if you remember back for you know, the past solar maximum, there were some disruptions to our electrical grid, some disruptions to some satellite signals. And what it means is that we might be inconvenienced. There could be a major solar flare, but that's not what we're expecting. If there is a major solar flare, we can expect a lot of problems here on Earth because we use electricity in our daily lives. But with a moderate one, we shouldn't expect too much trouble. Okay, so you said it's kind of more of a disruption uh, versus something more severe. But what does actually determine the severity uh, of these types of storms? Sure. So the sun emits radiation at us all the time. And there are points where the sun emits significant amounts of both radiation and matter. And that comes in any direction. But when it's pointed towards Earth and it's pointed towards our modern technology, well, that means that it can disrupt our electrical fields. Um, the sun itself emits so much electrons and so it just interferes with our modern, modern systems. And we rely so much more now on modern technology electronics than we ever did in the past. So that's why it's going to cause even more of a disruption this time around than last. All right. And that, that certainly makes sense. Um, you know, for, for a lot of people who who hear what you're saying and kind of got lost in the beginning of all this. Tell us simply, should we be worried? What are the best and then worst case scenarios here? We should not be worried. Um, best case scenario is that you'll go about your life and you won't even remember that it happened. Worst case scenario is that you might experience some brownouts if you're in a, a situation where you're reliant on a grid that is vulnerable. Um, it could be disruptions to certain signals like GPS that we all rely on on a daily basis, not just for driving, but for other things. And so in the worst case scenario, we'll just have those kinds of modern inconveniences. All right, my last question for you. Are we going to see more types of these uh, solar storm kind of storms. What kind of determines that? That's right. So we are in that cycle where we're going up to the solar maximum now. And so we're not there yet, but we can expect it to increase both the frequency and the intensity of these solar flares. And so don't think that this is something dangerous. We go through this every 11 years. So you just have to look back at what's happened and think, okay, we rely on electronics a lot more now than we did 11 years ago. So how is it going to be different this time? And what I recommend is that city administrators, anyone who has authority over protecting electronics, that we go ahead and take those precautions ahead of time to make sure that we are not vulnerable in our daily lives. All right, space professional consultant and author Laura Seward Forsick, thank you so much for your time. Thanks for having me. Thank you for watching. Go to newsnationnow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.